muda wako in... muda wako inkwisha wakati huu na walikoni thank you honorable speaker honorable speaker i want to say from the onset the issue of affordable housing is a noble initiative because our constitution talks about the right to shelter lakini sasa mbona unaangusha nilifikiria tulikuwa pale swahili bado Ha, basi ikiwa speaker umetaka niongee Kiswahili, wacha nirudi kwa Kiswahili lakini leo nilitaka kuongea Kiingereza. Can use any language? Use any language. Sasa honorable speaker lazima na, time yangu iregeshe vile ilivyokuwa. Maana naona nimepata some interruptions nyingi sana. Mheshimiwa speaker nataka niseme from the beginning uh, the issue of housing is a noble initiative because the constitutions talk about the right to shelter for Kenyans. But I want to say this idea was recklessly rushed. And that is why you see, during the public participation, majority of Kenyans objected on this idea of paying housing levy. And again, that is why we had some negative ruling from our courts. I want to say, Honorable Speaker, if today I may ask, whether we have a proper legal framework to ensure that there is proper accountability, transparency, and even the management of the housing levy. Because here we are talking about a big fund, a fund which needs to be monitored, a fund which needs a proper mechanism to ensure that there is proper oversight. And to me, I think we are not ready for that, and we don't have that right now. Honorable Speaker, in the bill, I've seen that the CS is going to be given extra power to give some exemption to maybe to some persons or categories of persons, the way it's been written in the bill. So my question is, where is that detail to show who are these persons or categories of persons? Are, are we not leaving a loophole for the CS maybe to abuse his power so that maybe he can give his friends, his chronics, just in the politics that it is in the clause that it can do some exemption. Honorable Speaker, I'm just looking on those people who are almost retiring. Maybe they have two or five years to retire, and they have done their contribution. And yet when they retire, it means they're not going to be able to contribute. What will happen to their contribution, or are they going to be legible to be given the houses or not? That is another question. Honorable Speaker, I'm also looking, how are we going to identify the beneficiaries, those people who are going to be given those units? And I'm saying this because one of the members here has just said, maybe we could have thought and maybe put up a cluster or target of persons, maybe those in the slums or those living under abject poverty. That could be another way of ensuring that those given those units are the right beneficiaries. Rather than just living like that, and then some cartels, we take advantage that they have got fathers, they have got mothers, they know who is who in that docket, and maybe they get the houses, they buy them, and then they resell it at a higher price to Kenyans, honorable speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'm also thinking right now, that project has only kicked in few counties and more so in only urban areas. So we are asking ourselves, what about the rural folk? Are they not Kenyans? And they're not going to be the beneficiary because to me, only those within that counties where the projects have kicked are going to be the beneficiaries of this housing, Honorable Speaker. Honorable speakers, as a Kenyans, I'm just looking for instance, in the long run, we keep on paying the levy, and someone just feels that, now I've paid so much, and I've not been given that house. Is there a mechanism where we can submit our complaints, we can put our appeals, so that we can get those houses, or we can be given back our monies, which you have paid through the housing levy, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, I'm feeling sick just to see how Kenyans are being evicted in a humane way. For instance, VOI, the VOI issue, more than 3,000 Kenyans were left in the cold just because land was needed for the housing, for the housing project. Also in Changamwe, you saw what happened, because all of you, you saw in the television what happened in Changamwe, in Kakamega, and other parts in this country. So for me, I'm just asking, 
in that position that we want to empower Kenyans to have shelter. And yet again, we are destroying those shelters where Kenyans use their monies, they struggle, they take some mortgages, they took some laws to ensure that they had shelters for their families. Honorable Speaker, I think we need to go back in the drawing board and see how are we going to ensure this issue of affordable housing in a way that we are not hurting many Kenyans right now, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to say here, many days ago when we used to have municipality, municipality which now are the counties, they used to build affordable houses, and yet there was no housing levy. And people used to buy those, and there were so good installment schemes, whereby maybe you pay every month, you pay a little amount, and after a certain period of time, you get that house and you get the ownership of that home. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to say here as Kenyans, we need to debate this issue in a sober manner so that all of us we are going to be winners. We should have a winning situation. Yes, we need affordable housing for our Kenyans who live in the slums, who don't have shelters, and you know it is not right for a, developed, for a developing country like Kenya that we still don't have such a project. But here today, we cannot do it in a way that we are putting Kenyans in a tight rope. Today, so many Kenyans have taken mortgage. Many Kenyans' house is not a priority. They want to take their children to university, to colleges. Maybe they want to open up a business empire so that they can have income generating activity to have some fund. Because today, when we keep on putting taxation and taxes and taxes to Kenyans, it's not that we are empowering our country in terms of economic, because today, how many companies have closed today in this country just because of the issue of taxation? How many companies have sucked so many Kenyans because of the issue of taxation? So anytime we come with a noble idea, let us see what will be the legal framework, what will be the framework which is going to be which is going to be employed so that it is a win situation to the government and to Kenyans. And again, the issue of land. We all know the categories of land. We have the national land, and we have also land and which are vested under the county government. In terms of the issue of land, tomorrow somebody is going to say, this was a community land, this is a public land. How has it changed to be a private land after somebody has been given a unity of a home? So there are so many other issues in terms of the legal perspective, which we need to address them before we agree that we want to ensure that Kenyans have shelters in this country. Honorable Speaker, I'm also looking at the 2% money for administration. And to me, as a lay person, that is big money because we are talking about big billions of money in the housing levy funds. And now you are taking 2% for administration. And you know, administration is only some few operations. So to me, I'm just like, where will be the surplus money going to be channeled? Where are we going to take that surplus money? Because if we just leave it, there'll be some cartels. And tomorrow, it will be a scandal after scandal because of that money. So before we agree and taking up and king up this project or maybe passing this bill. Let us have a bipartisan approach so that we can discuss, we can talk, and we can know the right way to take this matter so that Kenyans are not annoyed with us. Because today, you go to so many employees, those in the formal sectors, and look on their salary, it is zero. They don't have anything because everything has been deducted. There are so many deductions that most of Kenyans are, are getting de depression now. Mental illness is rampant in this country. And you're asking why? It is because people are not believing what they're seeing. You are working a lot, but more than 60% goes to the government. And then you're saying, you're asking yourself, where am I taking to my family? What do I have? as a result or as a balance from my salary, which I'm taking to my family. So, Honorable Speaker, I want to say, when we have good ideas, let us first talk, discuss it thoroughly, and get ways of ensuring that any time we want to do something which is good and which is going to take this country to another level, 
without having so many rejection and negativity, let us talk and let us get the better way of ensuring that we have our noble ideas being employed. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Now for again the